Hi, I'm Margaret Ryle and welcome back to the online tutorial on action research. Uh, in this session we're going to be talking about planning your action. Uh, in the last session you did a lit review and hopefully that helped you develop your expertise around the topic or idea that you're researching and gave you some ideas for the kinds of actions that you want to take and the kinds of measurements that you're going to be using to see whether or not that action is effective. So now, before you start the action, there are some exercises to help you think about the consequences before you get started. Um, and there are three that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about a logic model, we're going to talk about force field analysis, and we're going to talk about the need for informed consent before you get started. Okay? So let's start with the logic model. In order to understand your own thinking about the way you think this change is going to affect the workplace, it's important to map out a logic model. And so if you go to the resources, there are both technical and, and conceptual tools to help you think about what it means to frame your theory of action. So basically, it's thinking about what are the inputs to the action? What are the things that, that the assumptions that you have and the conditions that uh, stand behind taking this action? And then what are the outputs? What are the things that you think will happen as a result of taking this action? And generally, we look at the outcomes in terms of short-term outcomes, medium-term outcomes, and long-term outcomes. The ones that you'll be fashioning uh, data collection tools around will be the short-term consequences because those will be more immediate. But it is important to keep in mind what are the things that you expect to happen long-term as a result of taking this action. Uh, so that's the logic model and it doesn't take very long to create but it's a good thoughtful reflective process before you get started. The second is very similar but it instead of looking at what your sense is, it looks at what you think about the forces that are in your workplace in terms of the action that you're going to take. So Kurt Lewin, who is um, often credited as the first person to talk about action research, uh, talked about a force field analysis. So in your setting, you brainstorm and list all of the things that you think will get in the way of or will be a negative force in carrying out your action and all of the things that are positive or will help you in carrying out your action. And you give each of these different forces a numerical value and you can set the scale but let's say 1 to 10. So for each of the forces that you list that are positive you would list a number 1 to 10 for how strong they are and for each of the forces that are negative you would list a similar um, scale. You add up the numbers and you see are the positive numbers higher than the negative numbers or are the negative numbers higher than the positive numbers. Now it doesn't mean that if the negative numbers come out stronger that you can't do your action. It just means that you're going to have to spend more time working with people, uh, getting people on board to understand the kind of change you want to um, implement and why you want to implement that change. And it probably means you're going to step down the scale of your project. Uh, take very small steps because the environment is not as um, open to the kind of change that you are suggesting. If on the other hand the positive forces are stronger then it's likely that you're going to have a number of critical friends working with you already and you're ready to proceed and you could probably proceed with slightly larger scale um, uh, actions or um, with interactions among the number of people who are all helping you put this action in place. The purpose of the force field analysis is to help you understand what are your resources for moving forward, how cautious or how much help can you enlist in this process of change. So it's an important activity, it's a different way of thinking about your action than the theory of action, which is what you think is going to happen. This is really looking at what do you think the resources are in the setting to help you move forward on this action and reaction that you're hoping to create. 
The third issue revolves around ethical issues. Whenever you engage in research, it is important to think about what are the ethical issues that are involved. And in, in all cases when you do research, the, the person that you're doing research on needs to give their consent. In action research, you are doing research on yourself. So by nature of the process, you've already given the consent for you to study your own actions. Now, the reactions that you'll be looking at may involve some issues that require uh, informed consent or permission. And these, these issues you will need to be taking up with your immediate supervisor, um, your school district, um, your university, depends on who is supporting your action research. If you're doing action research as part of a professional development activity at the school, then they are providing the overview and they will make sure that your plans meet all of the requirements for ethical research. If you're doing your research as part of a, uh, a master's or doctoral program at the university, they will have an institutional review board that you will probably have to present your research to and they will approve the process. If you are working on your own, it's important, as I said, to talk with your immediate supervisor and be clear on whether or not the action that you're taking falls within the realm of your everyday work. If you are doing your job, you don't need informed consent. If you are doing something that requires people to do something that is not part of their everyday work experience or learning experience in school, then you, and you may need to get special permission from either in the case of students that are permission from their parents or in the case of your workplace, you may need to ask people if they agree to be part of, of your research. But in most cases in action research, people are studying their practices in their workplace and most of what they do falls within the scope of their everyday practice. So letting people know is always a good idea. Encouraging people to be co-researchers with you is a wonderful way of expanding the reach of your action research. So those are the three things that um, I'm suggesting for your planning your uh, research action. Your logic model, your force field analysis, and then your thinking about ethical issues. In all three of those areas, I have listed a number of resources, and it would be important to look at those resources, especially the one, the tutorials around uh, informed consent. And then you will be ready to start actually framing your action. So in the next tutorial, we'll be talking about your first cycle of action research. So enjoy the process of reflecting on your action, and I'll see you next time.